right, so for this week's Ask Me Anything, we're gonna do something completely different. People keep emailing me and messaging me about something they, not throughout the Ask Me Anythings, but they keep messaging me on my Facebook personally. They're like, why the hell would you sell your R8 uh, and buy DBS? So I decided to kind of break down the pros and cons of both cars uh, for you guys and to kind of tell you a little bit around my decision making around why I got rid of the R8, which was an amazing car, by the way, for all the R8 fans, and instead picked up a DBS. So to kind of make things clear, first I wanted to pick up a DBS, not to get rid of the R8. I wanted to kind of pick up a DBS just to have a DBS. It was always a car that was on my checklist for myself personally. It wasn't a car that I wanted to buy and resell kind of thing. It was more of a car that I wanted to buy and have just because I, I always uh, wanted one. And when the opportunity came to get a red one, like the one you're seeing in the background, well, then I got the exact car I wanted, so I went ahead and bought it. At the time, I hadn't decided to actually sell my R8. I posted on both Instagram and Facebook, you know, of what you guys think. Should I sell the R8 and buy DBS? Except when it was 50-50 between Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, so we decided that, hey, you know what? Screw it. We can keep both, so we bought both. I bought the DBS. I didn't really sell the R8. But a little bit later, I came to the conclusion that I didn't need the R8 anymore, and I didn't really care for it because it wasn't being driven much. Even though it was completely customized, I just didn't enjoy it as much. So here's why. The R8, as beautiful as it looks and as crazy wild as it looks, is still an entry-level exotic car. It goes along the lines of price-wise of, you know, a 911 uh, S Cabrio, uh, 991 or 911 Turbo, like 997.2. Uh, it, it goes all in the same price range. It's a great car. It's well-balanced. It is a sports car. Uh, mine had extremely loud exhaust. It was really well done, but unfortunately, my type of kind of enjoyment in driving a car does not come from being in a sports car. It comes from craftsmanship, it comes from beauty, it comes from just the aspect of kind of like the visual of the car just as much as it comes for the performance. And while the R8 is very wild looking and very exciting to people who are not really into cars, uh, it's also a lot more common than a DBS, uh, especially in South Florida. Everybody down here has like some insane amounts of cars that, you know, even when I go to the most popular places, uh, a Lamborghini is very common. Like, you're not special. You park your ass in the back. You know, like, nobody cares. So, with the R8, it was very entry level. And in essence, it wasn't that much fun to drive anymore for me. Uh, it was kind of, you know, like a Gallardo, but it wasn't really a Gallardo. And it, it had the Lamborghini sports side, but it wasn't really a Lamborghini, so it wasn't as raw. There, there's so many things it did great. So, what I, what I told all my yeah, followers and, and fans and friends who have messaged me was the R8 is the greatest car you can own if you only own one car. If you had a choice to have one car in your garage, you had a one car garage or you decided, hey, I'm not in town long enough, I don't drive enough, I just need one car, the R8 does a great job at that. Why? Because the R8 is a very well balanced, it's not the fastest, it's not the slowest, it's not the most comfortable, it's not uncomfortable, and it's beautiful, right? Like it has a lot of elements and it's new and it's fresh looking. So it does a lot of great things and it does that well if you have to drive it every day, you can enjoy it every moment. You can go from sport mode to really having a comfortable daily driver, you know? For me though, I, I don't like driving the same car every day. I get really annoyed. That's why I have a lot of cars. I don't like having the same feel every day. I like getting in my SL55, I like getting on DBS, I like Lamborghini. These are all, you know, different feelings and different cars uh, that create different emotions when you drive them and are used for different purposes. I also have a few SUVs that I use. So I really, really, really enjoy having that diversity. And when you have the diversity, when you have the rawness of the Lamborghini, and you have the, the beauty, elegance, craftsmanship of a DBS, and then you have the practicality of an SL, for example, uh, or a CL65 or an SL55, then it becomes really, really difficult uh, to find purpose for the R8 anymore at that point because you're hitting on everything the R8 does good on a great level by itself. Uh, and so therefore, it completely changes the dynamic of why you need an R8. And in this case, I realized that I really didn't. The other equation here is that the R8, believe it or not, is one of the greatest cars that holds its value. Uh, I bought it really well and I had a good opportunity to take it apart and sell it apart in a way that I was still going to make $5,000 on it. So I decided, you know what, if you can drive a car a, a duration of 10 months, enjoy 10,000 miles, you know, on the car, and which is a lot of an exotic, and still come out uh, on top, you know, a few thousand bucks, including the taxes you paid and everything else, then that's that's a that's a no-brainer, right? Like the car is gonna go. 
Uh, there are certain exceptions, like the DBS, you know, has always been a kind of a childhood dream car, has always been something I've always wanted. I've never had the right opportunity to buy it. It wasn't that it was too expensive, it was just a car that never came back at the right color, the right condition that I've always looked for and the right mileage. And when I found this one in Texas with like 7,000 miles, I thought, you know what, I, I absolutely have to gop it up. But this is red now, so if I got rid of it, it'd be hard for me to get back in it. But I can get in an R8 at any time uh, and at any moment in any color I want. Uh, and it's pretty out there. There's a lot of examples you know, being sold on between eBay, Auto Trader, and everything else. So the R8, great car if you're considering buying it. I definitely recommend it, as especially if it's your only cool car and you have another beater car or SUV, and then that's going to be your cool mostly used car. If you're going to use it, drive it, do it. If you're going to have a car on the side for the weekend and you really want a sports car to take out there and enjoy, I would personally still go with Lamborghini. Uh, despite the craftsmanship not being as good as Audi, the, the feeling, the rawness, and the superstar effect is like 10 times more. So I highly uh, still recommend the R8, and unfortunately just wasn't for me for the long term, but still an amazing car. And uh, you'll definitely see more of the DBS as we customize it. Uh, as a project, you know, with Velocity AP, uh, is going to do uh, the whole lineup of exhaust and everything else on it. Uh, we're going to get some suspension work on it as well as some wonderful 21 inch uh, polished wheels on it. So you're going to see a completely transformed DBS soon. And of course, uh, more updates on some more cars like this LP550 coming up with uh, additional upgrades as well. So I recently received a question, uh, which, which was pretty interesting. It was called, uh, how do you create change in people?